Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, caro Presidente Zamagni, querido Monsignor Marcelo Sanchez Sorondo, dear Professor Sachs, dear friends. It's a great honor, really, a great pleasure for me to be here at the end of this two intensive uh, and very inspiring, excuse uh, I could hear today, uh, days of uh, this workshop as a preparatory uh, time for, to the global compact in May. And uh, let me first of all thank uh, the, this part of the room, I mean the Pontifical Academy of Social Sciences for inviting me uh, and I feel really fully engaged both personally and institutionally representing my car in my current position of Assistant Director General for Education at UNESCO, UNESCO as the UN agency uh, which is responsible to coordinate and monitor SDG4, which is very much at the core of the discussion we have today. And, uh, you know, let me first, before to go straight to the point, uh, to, to start with this, with a personal, on a personal note, after the uh, so emotional, inspiring address we heard uh, some couple of hours ago from His Holiness, the Pope Francis, about education. And uh, it, it, it brings me back to some years ago, 2014, I was then, uh, I was service this country, my country, as Minister of Education, uh, University and Research. And the Pope uh, and the Vatican organized uh, an incredible uh, big meeting with school teachers and students uh, and in Piazza San Pietro, San Pietro Square was full, crowded, something like 2,000 hundreds, uh, you know, young children and teachers around. And the Pope, uh, I remember more or less this uh, content, uh, which is something he concluded his remarks today to us, uh, uh, talk to them and to all of us about the sense of truth and uh, the research of beautiful and, um, you know, the, the good and beautiful that education must bring. And this is, I think, something that it's really very, very, uh, you know, close to our main common purpose. If I, if I can keep back this very interesting last point. So, um, I, my, my, my intention today is to uh, describe uh, the initiative that UNESCO launched uh, during the last Anga week, uh, November 2019, about the futures with the mark of plurals of education. And through the lens of this initiative, I would like to highlight some uh, basic assumptions, principles that I'm sure we can share as the ground and basic values they are, you know, the common language, the common principles that we are working about in order to, to bring out to the importance of education at international level in a top-down and, and bottom-up process as well at the same time. And uh, I think that more than ever we need uh, a global compact for education that mobilizes uh, from the grassroots to the highest circles of decision making. As we know, we face an education crisis that uh, is not simply within the school system, but it's an education crisis which mirrors a wider crisis, that global crisis, uh, one that is social, moral, and environmental. I don't want to give to you as experts of all these kind of topics the list of the big challenges which, has, which are around us, rising inequalities, increasing inequalities, uh, culture and religious intolerance, distrust in uh, established institutions and, uh, and something which you can see all over the world from the south to the north, from the west to the east. And today we can see that more, more than ever, we need uh, that the international community can really uh, keep back 
uh, the values of uh, and the importance of education at the very core of the international political agenda. And I think that the, the main purpose we have in this room is really very much about that. And what, what we're discussing about, I should say that in short, we can say that existing models of growth and development are imploding. And uh, they're making our world each day more uncertain, fragile, and unsustainable as well. So there is no choice but looking for alternatives, for another kind of paradigm. So what we need today is not small changes, adjustment to the existing paradigm we are using, but it's really a question of disruptive change and innovation. Despite un unprecedented progress in access and participation over the past decades, uh, you know, UNESCO is the international provider of, of data in education. I decided not to mention data today, just focusing more on language and concepts. But you know very well numbers which are behind me and behind all the conversation we had today. So despite some progress we had in access and participation over the past decades, we can say that education is not living up to the magnitude of contemporary challenges. And uh, the case is clear for what we can define as a concerted global effort to rethink education, learning, and knowledge. There are three different dimensions of the process we are talking about to develop the capacities that the humanity needs for sustainable development and lasting peace. Aristotle, let me keep back this point, said, uh, among many other interesting, important principle we are still living upon that, uh, I say in ancient Greek and then tried this translation, o anthropos politikon zonesti. Men are basically social beings. And what we have to try today is to adapt our education system to make this social dimension of the humanity being once again able to drive the change and the progress and not to be driven by that. So, keeping back the point I'm being asked to discuss about, I should say that this is the ambition of the flagship initiative, the futures of education that UNESCO launched. It comes more than 25 years from the Delors report. Maybe you remember, no? It was an international community in uh, uh, Place de Fontenoy, headquarters of UNESCO, uh, who 12 personalities, outstanding personality, who started to discuss about the, 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 the changes that education had to bring to the society and in the education itself. And today, I think that such uh, an experience must be relaunched with a new spirit, a new ambition, and a new objective. There are some basic questions that are still on the table. I want to mention some of them. How can, uh, um, how can uh, this, uh, this principle, the pillars of learning and knowledge, be strengthened and renewed? How can education respond to the challenges of achieving economic, social, and environmental sustainability? And uh, it's really time to take a hard look at the very purposes of education, learning and knowledge, and to generate an agenda for public debate and action, both thinking, rethinking, and acting differently from we did in the last century, in the recent past. And uh, this is not a matter of minimizing, undermining uh, the need of the urgent action still required uh, to reach the more than 260 million children who are still out of the school. We know very well that this is the, 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 the least to do that we have today in many regions of the world. I should say Africa first, but many other developing countries are still there, no? just to, to, to reach the, the, the basic primary education. But what we see is that 
we have to go beyond the numbers. We have to go beyond the quantitative dimension of the problem. And to reach quality inclusive education to, for all is very much about rethinking the basic principles. And uh, let me say that in UNESCO perspective, more than ever, the future of education and the future of society are this two sides of the same coin. We cannot split these two issues and, uh, and uh, address each of them separately in different contexts, in different constituencies. We have to put these two topics uh, at the very top of the common international agenda. Significantly, this time, the International Commission established uh, to take forward this project uh, is chaired by uh, an, a personality, uh, a strong personality, strong lady from the south of the world is President Saled uh, uh, Work Zwede, President of Ethiopia. And this is an important sign. No? We had Jacques Delors uh, in the 90s, a very standing personality from the north, from France, as former minister and then in, in, in president of the European Commission. And the President Saleh today coming from a country of 100 million people, of whom 60% are under 25 years old. And this is a common framework, you know, for African countries. So this must send a signal for leaders. And uh, I, I'm sure, we are sure that air participation reflects a commitment to education over the long term as an engine, a driver for development, peace and reconciliation. And these are the pillars of the conversation we want to launch. So my, my intention now giving this framework uh, as the basis of uh, the main topics I would like to address, is to start to, f to, to look for an, uh, a question, or an answer to the question we have. What do we want to become? I think that all I, I heard this morning, I'm sure yesterday, it was a something very much close to this very core question. What do we want to become? And, uh, I wish, we, we, we wish that this reflection uh, will be informed by multiple world of views, uh, multiple countries, constituency, and points of view, not only discussing about education from the education perspective. And that's why the, 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 12 person, the 19 sorry, personalities who are component this, uh, this international commission come from different, very bit different backgrounds, as well as the advisory group. Uh, Jeffrey Sachs is one of the outstanding member of that, uh, uh, with, which represent the link between the thinkers and the organization who have to, after the discussion, to implement an action plan. Let me share with you some basic assumptions we are starting from, 10 of them. Of course, it's not, uh, it's an open list. We have, and we hope that the list will increasingly become longer than this. But I think that these 10 points can help us to find the common language and the common, you know, puzzle and pieces of a common encyclopedia. First, we consider that in our increasingly independent, interdependent world, something that all of you said very clearly this morning, knowledge must be respected, respected as a co global common good, calling for more inclusive, democratic, and transparent ways of genera generating, sharing, and applying it. So global common good is the basic principle we want to build this global conversation on education. The second point uh, is about uh, the need uh, to anchor this global conversation in uh, a humanistic vision of development. One uh, that has been already defended by UNESCO since, uh, I should say, the establishment as UNESCO, as you know, 75 years ago, when after the Second World, there is really a, a strong need to rebuild the society, not simply rebuilding monuments and uh, uh, going beyond uh, 
the, the trauma of the Second World by just going back to the basic principles. And today, I think we are, we are more or less in a situation that you compare with. Today, this uh, ambition is guided by a central concern for sustainability, understood as the responsible action of individuals and societies towards a better future for all and the planet. So it's a common shared responsibility, both individually speaking and as a, as a common society. The fourth point, and this is the third point, no? the central concern for sustainability. The fourth point is about reaffirming a set of universal ethical principles. Let me bring the question of ethics in education, which is a, which is a word a, a bit missing in the common vocabulary around. Let me say like this. So, there is a need in our perspective to reaffirm a set of universal ethical principles, starting with equity and inclusion for sure, to privilege historically marginalized voices and combat all forms of discrimination against women and girls, indigenous people, persons with disabilities, refugees, migrants, people living in countries affected by conflict, and I, I, will, I should continue. Cultural diversity is at the very core of this part of the work. Through this humanistic lens, humanistic vision, we steer the debate on education beyond its utilitarian role in economic development. I know that is a very strong assumption, but I think that we have to be brave. If we, if we have a, a high ambition, I think that we have brave and to use the right language. We must go beyond the role that education has. Still, it's important, of course, to match uh, competencies and skills with the market, ab absolutely, but it's not simply everything about that. So to go beyond the economic side of education for development, I should say that this means to have strong implications for the definition of learning content, pedagogies, curriculum development, as or for the role of teachers and other educators. I'm sure that you are impressed uh, by the, uh, his holiness words uh, about uh, uh, los docentes, le, 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 les enseignants, <laughs> teachers, right? And teachers is the fifth point uh, which will have a critical, the role of teacher, not the critical role of teacher in the next, uh, uh, in the next future in a fast change in society will be the fifth point of our discussion. Uh, to say that brings me to, to, to reaffirm that development cannot be simply framed in terms of economic growth. So it's a question of going beyond the quantitative concept of growth as increasing the, the, the GDP every single year by competition between countries and competition within countries uh, and using another approach which is based on uh, cooperation a new kind of inclusive partnership. I think that's the, the main purpose, if I understand well, of this initiative and the 14th of, of May, for sure. The second point is about shaping, of course, a more just and sustainable world uh, through learners uh, needing the knowledge and values to live meaningful and purposeful lives in harmony with others and the planet. I think that the word harmony can be something that we have to take into account because harmony is a question of a new kind of balance between different uh, components of the education uh, process and the balance between the role of education and the other kind of assets that development must include. And this is very much related to the importance of education as a basic human right. Let me underline this point as health, 
as the, the, the right to express uh, our religious uh, uh, faith, our beliefs. Education is a basic human right, and we have to reaffirm strongly this principle, which, which let me say, in the very many conversations we, 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 we listen to around the world, is no more so obvious as maybe it was some decades uh, uh, before. And significantly, the UN 2030 agenda um, adopted by the entire global community, uh, all the UN countries uh, signed uh, five years ago now, right, recognizes this point. And uh, recognizing this point, the agenda dedicated a specific target in the, 20, in the, in the, in the in the list of the targets of targets of the SDG4, which is the very well known 4.7. I think that 4.7 for us, beyond technicalities, must become in a common, uh, simple, understandable language the core of our work. It is, uh, you know, sorry, I, I remind to, to you uh, uh, to very, very well known and shared values, but just to to, 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 to repeat the importance, the importance of them. It's about uh, environmental awareness, uh, global citizenship, uh, human rights, cultural peace uh, and nonviolence, uh, sense of dignity and respect and tolerance uh, and appreciation of cultural diversity. So now the challenge is how can we include this 4.7 in the new this century agenda for education. And the second challenge is about how we can measure the impact of this big change and shift of paradigm. I'm sure that we can address together these two big challenges. And, uh, and fundamentally, fundamentally, in my view, this is very much about taking care. If you wanted to ask, I don't know if you agree with me, but the key word, of 2030 agenda, the key word of this century should be really taking care, taking care of the planet, taking care of myself, taking care of the others. And taking care is very much about changing the position of individuals in relationship with society and the common and the common purpose we have, thanks for the word, it's a really at the very core, you're right, sorry, but repeating many times. So we are together advocating for a greater attention to, to this dimension uh, and to, until now, seven points. The, about that, uh, let me say something that uh, I've heard the, the Pope Francis, not today specifically, but in another beautiful moment we had for some of you together celebrating his uh, 50 years of sacerdotcy, the importance of arts and music in education to stimulate creativity and uh, a new kind of relationship between children and after that in the, in, where there will be adults uh, in the society. Well, seven, eight point for us is uh, something for sure uh, is not a new entry in the list, but it's important to revitalize this point, a lifelong and life-wide vision of learning. This is very much about uh, uh, the importance of uh, attention to transitions between uh, uh, levels and places uh, of knowledge and learning. And this is the importance of uh, not uh, in considering learning uh, a process uh, in the classroom, uh, in the laboratories and libraries, uh, libraries of universities, but a process which is absolutely every single day for all of us uh, from the, the, the birthday until the end of our life. And uh, this is another very important dimension. Nine the, the, the nine point is very much was what I interestingly uh, listened uh, from your presentation, brilliant presentation this morning, is uh, interdisciplinarity. This is something that we have really to put at the very core. In terms of the methodological approach we need, let me underline one single point among the many others we can quote about that, the importance of connecting neurosciences and the outcome and the results of neurosciences to both 
education in the classroom, teachers, educators, and training of all of them, and, oh my God, I'm going, uh, I'm running, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, policy makers. Policy makers, politicians, ministers must know better and more about the outcome. So the, the last point, and I can conclude with that, this conversation privileges a more internationalist and coordinated approach. So the need of a universal uh, uh, you know, kind of uh, community that we are building together. I would like to conclude uh, with uh, some words, if I may, there are three of them. I heard in the, in the early mass this morning by, by Mariana, uh, the, the challenge we have, in my view, is, uh, as you said, is try to see how education can transform a lot of information children have, all of us have today, in knowledge and then in wisdom. I'm sure that we can do something together about that.